Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. Now in today's video I would like to go through some things where the Airbus may catch you out. Now I haven't made this up myself. In fact these come from Airbus directly. Like all manufacturers Airbus is collecting a ton of data from all their planes that are operating around the world and they share all that information publicly with us pilots especially in the shape of safety bulletins but anyone can go on to the Airbus website and see some of that data and see what kind of information they have collected and what statistical significance they have. I have added a link to that website in the description of this video. A lot of that is very technical but there are some things that could actually catch you out even in the sim and I decided to pick a few of those things and we're gonna be looking at them now just to make you aware of some gotchas if you like on the A320 series. Okay let's go. Okay let's come to our first scenario. So this scenario has happened on some short flights and these flights are very busy. I know that from personal experience, below 10,000 feet we're not supposed to do anything. Above that then you quickly need to get the weather for your destination, get out the charts. There's a lot going on. Uh, maybe the cabin crew will come in, remind you that you have to wheelchair, so you need to send an ACAS message to your destination, uh, informing them you need the wheelchair service. You ask your colleague how much fuel they want uh, for the flight back and then you need to order the fuel. There's a lot of frequency changes going on. Maybe the weather isn't good and you have to avoid thunderstorms. Usually these short flights are just work, 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 work constantly. And so I can see how what I'm about to show you can happen. So we are doing a short flight and if we look here we are supposed to climb to flight level 350. This is normal even on short flights. The most efficient way to fly is to climb and then go straight into the descent. We are cleared by the previous sector to 350. Uh, they told us climb and maintain flight level 350. Now they hand us over to the next sector and they are already the approach sector and they tell us when ready descent flight level 180. So we still want to climb, we still have a bit to go, but to make sure we don't forget, we put in 180. And what happens now is the aircraft has gone into a basic mode of speed, vertical speed. It will just hold the current vertical speed. The problem with this is that there is no longer a target altitude. Our target altitude is 180, which is below us. We are at 240. So this aircraft is now just going to climb forever and ever and ever. So if you're really busy and you get distracted and maybe this happens very close to your actual cruising level 350, there is a good chance that you go through 350 and you basically do a level bust. And apparently this has happened many times. It's never happened to me but according to the Airbus bulletin it has and so this is something you need to be careful of if you decide to climb a bit further but already put in the new cleared altitude keep an eye on this you don't want to bust the altitude uh, at some point ATC will contact you and ask you why you're still climbing and what are your intentions it's usually <laughs> a very polite way of saying what the hell are you doing yeah that's not good they will have to write the report, you will have to write the report and you will have to explain how all of this happened. I can see how this can happen, really. Uh, I sympathize with the pilots that had this experience because like I said, it's a very busy environment. There's a lot going on. You want to think ahead, remind yourself of the nucleared altitude. The Airbus goes into a basic mode and before you know it, you bust your altitude. So something to look out for. Okay, next scenario. Uh, I have to be honest with you, this has happened to me. Only once though, only once. And this was many years ago when I was new on the Airbus. 
So we are supposed to cruise at flight level 350 as discussed before. The controller has told us climb flight level 330, 350 is occupied. So you climb to 330 and you do the level off because maybe the next controller will give you your filed altitude. So we're cruising at 330, the next controller keeps us here, the next controller keeps us here and then you are being told start descending flight level 250. And what's important to note is the aircraft is still in climb mode because we've never reached 350. But because we were busy, we just didn't pay attention. So you just put in your new cleared altitude. I don't know, let's say we are descending 240 and you want to do a managed descent and you click and nothing happens. Because the aircraft still wants to climb we haven't gone into cruise yet. So it's no big deal. You can obviously uh, descend with open descent. But if you look at the progress page, the aircraft is still in climb mode. And that's not a good condition to be in, especially if you have to do a go around, something like that. So the way around it is you simply go to your cruising level and put in a lower level than what you're at. Uh, let's do that. And then, in theory, if this works correctly, once we pass that level, you should be going into cruise and then descent mode. There you go, cruise mode. And then it's very easy, it will go into descent mode once it realizes we are going lower. So that's the way around that. Like I said, it's happened to me. We realized fairly quickly what was going on. I wanted to do a managed descent. It, it just wouldn't do it. And after a few seconds of pushing, pushing, we realized, oh, we're still in climb mode. Can happen. It's no biggie, but just be aware of it because you don't want to fly an entire approach in the climb mode. That's not what the aircraft is designed to do and it could cause some problems. Okay, next scenario. So we are on a heading and we are told you are cleared for the ILS. So we do what we always do. Light slope blue, lock blue, cat 3 dual, autopilot 1 and 2. But as you can see, our flight plan really wanted to go here, but we're not going to go there at all. Uh, we're going to join the ILS between those two points, which means when we join the ILS, the aircraft still wants to fly to this point, which means the flight plan is not sequenced. So to do that, you simply go to the direct page, in our case go to Inusu, and just draw an outbound line, <coughs> which is 333. We insert, and then we do pull heading because we need to fly heading, and now you have a nice straight line, and Inusu is the next waypoint. You can see it up here, that's the next waypoint. But look what has happened on the PFD. The approach is no longer armed, and if you don't pay attention now, the aircraft is just going to fly in a straight line through the ILS. So it's very important to actually rearm the ILS once you do anything like this. Because the aircraft will jump back into NAV mode. And especially if you approach an airport with two parallel runways, this could become pretty dangerous. So I let it go now and you can see the aircraft will just fly straight through the localizer and just carry on because it has forgotten, so to speak, that we were cleared for the approach. So that's a trap that I've seen many times. I'm aware of it, so whenever we do something, I'll just rearm the approach. But I can see how maybe a new pilot or in a stressful situation, you forget, and then you fly through the localizer, and then you get the famous uh, state your intentions by ATC, as discussed before. So yeah, here we go. We'll fly through the ILS and nothing will happen. So another little trap, just be careful of that, especially if you fly online. Okay, last scenario. Uh, I'm not actually sure how well this is um, simulated in the Phoenix A320, but I'm gonna try. So we are flying to our destinations. We're just about to approach top of descent. And as you can see, we are flying at a very high cost index. Uh, maybe we are running late, maybe the airport is about to close. A lot of airports in Europe do close uh, at night time, 
so we want to make sure we don't miss the curfew then we have to divert you know it's all very complicated so in any case the company has told us fly fast so as you can see uh, the aircraft is still accelerating we are pretty close to our maximum speed but it's all good it's all going well now we reach top of descent and i would like to descend atc clears us to i don't know 150 and we're going to do a managed descent as you can see the aircraft is now aiming for a certain value of speed a speed band so to speak and the top of the speed band here is right underneath the maximum speed that we are allowed to fly and this is kind of tricky because if the aircraft thinks we are kind of high it will fly right here at this speed and if then you end up with any kind of wind change or slight turbulence you are immediately going into the overspeed and this has happened apparently many times that a managed speed at a high cost index has caused the aircraft to go into the overspeed uh, that's no good because you have to write a report maintenance has to come so it's a bit of a kerfuffle so we don't want that um, in fact I think I might be able to demonstrate let's say ATC tells us fly inbound Lima Bravo uniform so that means we are now too high and the aircraft will try and make up for that by descending faster and by flying faster so let's see what it does uh, as you can see we're getting closer and closer and closer to the maximum speed and the less margin you have the more danger there is that you actually end up going into the overspeed well, it's actually heading there right now as we speak yeah well see this is no good uh, it's very close so any kind of turbulence now any kind of wind shift you're straight in the overspeed so two ways of um, avoiding this either you fly with a selected speed just reduce it to something more sensible and use open descent that gives a bit more control the other option is that if you go to the performance page you simply set the managed speed to something more conservative maybe I don't know 320 knots 350 knots something like that and then you can still use managed descent and have a bit of a better margin yeah something to look out for on the Airbus okay and this brings us to the end of this video I hope there was something in there that you found useful and maybe interesting I hope the scenarios made sense. If you have any further questions, please uh, leave them in the comment. I've had a lot of requests already for other topics that I should cover. I will try and work my way through them as best as I can. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye.